Hello, welcome to the Bath Studio School. We're very excited to have you here today and yeah. John, could you please tell us about your background in film documentaries? Uh, yeah, firstly, thanks very much for having me on. And um, I mean, my, my experience in, in, in production and broadcasting, it kind of started back in 1994. So uh, it's, um, and there was, there was a lot of luck involved in that, to be honest, and, and, and that can be the case when it comes to actually establishing a career in, in television and film. And, um, and I, I just literally, I mean, you've, I don't like cliches, but uh, I was in the right place at the right time in Glasgow. And uh, I was kind of doing media studies. I didn't grow up in Scotland. I didn't grow up in Glasgow. I grew up in Africa. So um, I'd only been in the UK for a short period of time wanted something to do and um, while I was uh, at this media organisation uh, being trained in different aspects I didn't really know anything to be honest with you. Um, I had no experience in, in broadcasting at all and um, up the road was Scottish television and what they would do is they would take people from this, this media training organisation that I was part of and, and use them as runners for maybe a week or a month or however long they needed them. So. One day they needed someone and um, I was asked to go up and, and speak to someone uh, up there who would later, years later, become my, uh, a very close friend of mine and, and my, my head of department. So you never went in with like, any intention of doing to, like, going to do documentary films then? No, no, not really. Um, I'd always been uh, in, in South Africa, I'd, I'd trained as a, as a civil, uh, civil engineering draftsman, and, uh, but I'd always been, um, I'd always been interested in not necessarily being on camera, um, but being involved behind um, in actually creating something uh, on screen. And I'd always been interested in that, but when I was, you know, where I went to school and then college, we never had what, what, you, what you all have here now. There, were no, there, was, there, there wasn't really any way to, 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 to become, to, to get this kind of experience uh, yeah. that, that students now have. So um, it was very, very limited. The options that I had when I was your age, they were very, very limited. And um, so the opportunity never, never really presented itself. And then, but it, so it took me to kind of come over here for a holiday um, to get just my intention was to stay for a month in, in the UK and then go back to South Africa and uh, I, I ended up staying and, and, and then began a career um, um, I'm sure it was a very successful career in broadcasting and, um, and, and a new life in the, in the United Kingdom and then that's how it began so are there any examples like we could we could have a look at? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this um, I've brought a, just a short kind of film with me to it, to, to kind of give you an example of some of the stuff that, that I've done, and um, and then I, what I'll do is I'll just play it now. Okay. These are just kind of snippets of, of what bits of work that I have done. Please excuse how I look in okay. 1996. <laughs> I was a lot younger, <laughs> and, um, and I think uh, hairstyles of the 90s have a lot to answer for. So, yeah. But apart from that, I'll just give, you, I'll just give okay. you an idea. That was some great piece of footage right there. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that basically, that, 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 those are just kind of snippets of how, what has kind of happened. There's, there's been so much more that I've been really, really fortunate enough to to have been kind of part of, and yeah. um, and and I, I mean, 1996, um, I, I spent as a as a as a, a production journalist, and uh, and and uh, reporter with with the newsroom in Scotland and uh, with with Scottish Television, and STV is part of ITV, and um, and how I ended up there was, you know, I, I went I went up for that interview that day when when they were looking for a runner, and basically if. Um, you know, it's one of the things that I want to say to, to, to students here is that um, what what they should do, it's just a suggestion on my part, is 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 try and get in somewhere, you know, even at this this early stage, um, whether it be in with a local newspaper or a local radio station, anywhere, because that is the difficult part. It's actually getting in. You can have as many qualifications as you like, and that is important. It's massively important, but there's such a high demand for, for, for many, many students all over the country who want to get into this field. Um, so the earlier that you can make contacts with people who work in broadcasting, it doesn't have to be the BBC, it doesn't have to be ITV, it doesn't have to be Sky. I mean, this can be any kind of, any kind of 
an organization that's involved in some kind of broadcasting, that's the key to actually getting in the door. Getting in the door is the most important part of, of, of attaining a career in, in, in this kind of, in this kind of um, aspect of media. Um, and then, so I mean, I did that, worked as a researcher on different programs for a couple of years, and then I, I was um, moved into current affairs. I went undercover on three documentaries, expose productions for Scottish television. And then well, after I did those three undercover programs, I um, was asked to go into the newsroom. And um, I didn't want to be on, on, on camera. Yeah. Uh, one day I'd just, been in, I'd just been in the newsroom for a couple of weeks. I'd been doing voiceover reports and the head of news phone uh, called me in and asked me how I was doing. I said, yeah, loving it. And uh, he said, how do you feel about being on camera? And I said, well, to be honest with you, would you want to put this face on camera? And I laughed. I said, I'd, ra I'd rather not, really. I said, I'm quite happy to stay behind the camera and, and create things. And, and he said, that's all I need to know. And then the next day, they put me on camera. Um, so, and I, I think he just wanted people who didn't want to be on camera, on camera. So, yeah. and, uh, and I did that for about a year. And that, that, that's, that, that piece is very important to me because, I mean, I worked in broadcasting for, in television for 14 years. And lots of people have asked me, they said, what was the highlight of your broadcasting career? Because I have met so, a lot of so-called famous people. But for me, the highlight of my, my broadcasting career and my, my television career was, was, was meeting that old soldier and interviewing yeah. that old soldier from the, from the First World War. Yeah. You know, I, I, I had the privilege of sitting opposite, opposite history. Yeah. And, and he shared his stuff with me. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's why Thank that's you. in there. I think we're going to have to take a short break now, but thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Bath Studio School. Uh, we're continuing our interview uh, with John Thompson. Um, can we carry on talking about your previous footage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as I was saying before the break, um, you know the highlight. The highlight for me um, during my, my broadcasting career it wasn't meeting famous people. It was it was meeting that that, that old man, that, that veteran of, of of the First World War, who, if I remember correctly, survived the war. And it's even he he was in the trenches from 1914 to 1918. Um, so that in itself is is nothing less than miraculous. And and I remember. What he kept talking about was um, it wasn't it wasn't the machine guns or the bombs that that seemed to have had the most effect on him. It was the cold. He talked about the cold all the time, um, and I, I I don't know if it if if many of them froze to death. Uh, I I don't know the the answer to that, but it affected him more the cold, having to sit in the cold in in in, in the mud and, and all that for all that time. And, um, and that's one thing about being an, an interviewer. And it's one thing that I'll always say to, to, to young people who are, who are planning on moving into a career in filmmaking is, is that really what we do at the end of the day is we are storytellers and we tell the stories of, of others, you know, other people who have a story to tell. And, and that's quite a privilege. And, and that, that should always be that should always be um, respected. And because when you find yourself in a situation where you're interviewing someone, especially about something that's, that's deeply, deeply personal to them, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite a privilege to actually be able to sit opposite someone and, and listen to what they have to say. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a big difference between, say, being a news reporter going out and interviewing an MP or M interviewing a doctor or interviewing whoever else for a very quick soundbite yeah. to take back to the edit suite, turn it around, anything, it's, you know, it's news where they get it out, get it out, get it out, because that's what you do in news. Um, but when you're sitting down, you're spending time with someone and they're talking about something that's really deeply personal to them, then, you know, you, you, um, you need to, th there's only one way to get someone to open up about stuff and that's to spend time with them. And, and beforehand and establish a rapport. It's absolutely paramount to anyone who's thinking about going to documentary filmmaking. You don't just turn up with someone and then start asking them questions and then walk away. Mm. You know, you, you need to get to know them. So how did it make you feel when you were like talking to that like uh, veteran? 
It was very moving. It was very, very moving. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I couldn't actually believe that I was there because I couldn't actually believe that we'd, we'd, I'd managed to find one because yeah. in 1996, when that, when that, that was a special report that went out on um, Scotland Today uh, on, in Scotland, and um, it, it, he was 101 then. Yeah. So, you know, he he won't be around anymore, and um, so it was quite a surprise to actually to find a soldier who who was still alive, and. Um, and it was very, very, very humbling. Very, very humbling. And um, I'm not interested in, in, in famous people or so-called celebrities. And, yeah. you know, I have met quite a few, more so to do with foot, in football, because from the newsroom, I was asked to go in uh, to the sports department as an assistant producer. And then I, I, I went on to become producer, producer, director in sport. Um, so I, met, I've, I have met quite a few well-known, well, well-known footballers. And, um, but... Um, that, the, the old man, the soldier, was, uh, he was, he's, he's the highlight of, of my, my career, really, so far. Yeah. So now, moving on a bit, <clears throat> can you talk to us through your documentary making? Uh, I think for anyone here who is serious about becoming a filmmaker, um, I think the first thing is you have to, you have to really want it. You have to really want it, because you're... You're gonna have to fight for it, you know. You're gonna have to persevere, and you're gonna have to make the contacts that I mentioned earlier on. You'll need to get to know people who are in the business, um, and th and th and through that way, you'll start to find yourself kind of meandering through the industry. Um, and when it comes to actually constructing an, uh, a documentary, I mean, obviously you're you're telling a story, and 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 the story come will come from an individual or or two or three people and um, and really what you have to do then is you have to get to know them. A documentary really is about, for me, it's about people or a person talking. If it's just one person, then as, a, as, as an interviewer and, and as, as a filmmaker, my job is to A, build a rapport with them, make sure they're completely at ease. Um, I never ever go in with um, a list of questions and I, I, I never have done. Um, when I, I, and the reason for that is my fir <coughs> the first job that they sent me out uh, to cover the first news story they, f they sent me to cover out in the newsroom. Um, I was being I was being um, I, had, I had a mentor in the newsroom. There was a, a journalist who'd been there for years, and he was just making sure that I was okay. So they said they were they were they sent me out in my first job, and I was getting ready to leave the newsroom, and I was writing down all these questions to ask. And uh, and he Mike he kind of sidled up to me and he said, "What are you doing?" <clears throat> I said, I'm just writing a list of questions for the, for the interview. I'm, I'm, the crew are meeting me around the back in, in 20 minutes. So I, I'll just draft up a list of questions now. And, um, and he just said to me, he said, if I ever see you do that ever again, I'm going to put my foot so far up your backside. And I said, well, why? I'm, I, I, need, I need questions. I'm, I'm going to interview someone. He said, you need one. You need one to get them to start talking. He said, after that, he said, you should be listening to what they're saying. They will be giving you the questions in their answers, you know, because if I'm not listening, if I'm focusing on my next question, I'm not listening to what this person's saying. Yeah. And it makes perfect sense. So from that point on, whenever, and so that's from 1996 to now, once I've established a rapport with someone, they're comfortable, I'm comfortable, they trust me. I then start throwing them questions. But the first one will always be, um, let's say, let's say it's about, um, I don't know, someone who, uh, let's say, someone who is about to walk the Great Wall of China. Yeah. 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 Okay. For, to raise charity, <coughs> money for charity. So my first question will be, why are you doing this? Yes. That's, that's all I need. And then they start to tell me and tell me, and then I listen to what they're saying and I'll pick up bits. So you said this, what do you mean by that? And that is it. And as you're doing that, you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper into them. They start to share more, they start to open up more. Yeah. You know, I could go in with a list of questions and ask them and they'll just give me answers. I don't want just answers. I want this stuff. Yeah. The only way I'm gonna get this stuff from them yeah. is if I start to kind of yeah. move through. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about the film course at Bath Spa? The film course, the film and TV course at Bath Spa is, um, 
it's it's fantastic. It's it really really is. It's um, it's still quite uh, it still has a relatively small number of students, so it's very it's a very, it's a very intimate course. So getting access to uh, the 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 lecturers and the the technical demonstrators, the people who work there, the staff, is 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 very easy. The the facilities that they have there, the I mean they they pretty much have an actual uh, t television studio gallery yeah. uh, in 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 the uni, and um, it's it's a fantastic fantastic course and. Um, it, uh, it's I, I would I would I really would recommend because they to anyone here who's interested in, in really seriously interested in progressing in, in, into into this as a career, go to Bath Spa Uni because they spend a lot of time teaching the the, the students and showing the students all all the, the, the various aspects, all the various disciplines of filmmaking and also drama as well throughout throughout the three years and. Um, and and the staff, the staff. I mean, I'm, I'm one of them. Are, are fantastic and very approachable, and um, really, it's it's a hands-on. It's a, it's a hands-on course. You know, a lot. It's mostly hands. It's a lot of it's hands-on. So you will, you will leave if you leave here and you go there. You will be making. You will be making uh, your own. Uh, short film documentaries. You will be producing and being part of your own um, multi-camera drama in the studio. You will be yeah. with building sets, all sorts, you know. And um, and and the students there are doing really well. Yeah. Are so you, how oh, are you? Oh, sorry. Sorry. How are you involved with Bath Spa then? Um, I am one of the technical demonstrators with Bath Spa. Um, what I do is because a lot of my when I when I worked in, in in, in broadcasting, when I worked up in Glasgow, um, for, for, for the, the latter, say, kind of eight, nine years of my time, my, my job title was producer-director. So what I would do is during the week, I would produce and pull the, the programme together, pull together the running orders for the programmes, write yeah. all the scripts, allocate, reporters go here, there and there. But then as soon as I walked into the studio gallery, my, my role changed to director. So I would direct the programmes live on air. Um, and my, my job there is at Bath Spa Uni is because they have such an incredible um, uh, studio gallery, uh, myself and two other um, people, we are pretty much in the gallery all the time and we show and, and kind of, we oversee the students and, and teach them, you know, um, correct gallery discipline, um, how the gallery can work, how they can use it. Um, in. In, in exactly the same way as it would if they were to walk into a, a gallery, either at the BBC or Sky, there is a discipline to a gallery, and, and that, that all centres around the, the director. Um, I mean, you've heard the saying, calling the shots. I mean, that's where it comes from. The director calls the shots, and, and he, over, he or she oversees what is happening. And, uh, but yeah, they, they, they enjoy <coughs> it, so that, that's primarily what, what I do at Basque. Yeah. Do you currently edit like your documentaries and everything? I think um, I do, uh, yeah. I do and um, if I was to say, there's a, there's a couple of things that I would uh, this is so important, I think making a documentary really is, is obviously you, you, you have people talking on camera yeah. about they're telling a story um, they, 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 will, they have to be the, the priority in any production, making sure that they're okay and getting out of them what what they want to share, you know, with yourself. Yeah. Um, getting the shot right. You're not just pointing a camera at a person. Um, look at where you're pointing the camera at a person, where you're doing the interview, making use of um, either artificial light, but if you can, then, then natural light, um, for example. Um, yeah, this time of year, We've got some incredible twilight, you know. So if you wanted yeah. to interview someone using twilight, yeah. um, setting up the camera so that you catch maybe flickers of that light coming across the lens, it's, it's using what we have. We've got so much around us that we can use. That sometimes, and a lot of the time, we don't need anything else. Mm. Yeah. So it's being creative, and it's also, it's for each one of you and 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 and, and your peers, you know, the students who you're with. You know, be confident in in, in in your own creativity. I mean, you're all here for a reason. You're all here 
at Bath Studio School because you are creative and because you want to move into this field. So yeah. be confident in yourselves. If you have an idea that's maybe not the same as what other people are thinking, just say it, just do it and say, well, why don't we shoot it that way? Because you may actually be stuck. You may actually be starting your own trend, yeah. you know? So, um, and if there's one thing I, I need to say this, the importance of sound, the importance of sound. Sound is massive in any production. You know, it, I think a lot of, a lot of and, and I still do, it's always trying to catch, the, trying to get the right shot, get the right shot, get the right shot, get the right shot. But trust me, there have been a couple of occasions when I've gone out and I've got the right shot, but I've messed up the sound. And it is the worst feeling because, yeah. because um, sound plays a massive part in any production. And if used properly, um, can actually make a production a, a whole lot better. Yeah. So would, can we have a look at the second clip now then? Yeah, yeah. This is just a couple of minutes. I'll probably crash out of this at some point. But there's, there's a reason why I wanted to, wanted to, sh want, okay. want to show you this, okay? Right. This was obviously a minute long, but like, could you please tell us the main difference between a documentary film to other formats of film? I mean, I, I primarily focus on, on, on documentary, you know, yeah. and um, I've, I've, there's something about, the, for me, there's something about, it has to be real, um, and the truth is very, very important, yeah. you know. Um, I have made, I, I've made, um, I think two other, two other films which were scripted and acted, and um, you know they, they were kind of almost there was a kind of documentary feel about them, but really they 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 they, they were acting students who, um, who I worked with and 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 and, and directed and and filmed, um, and. It, it did what it did what it was supposed to do, and 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 the the, the client was happy with it, and that was that was at Bath, um, that was at uh, Royal United Hospital Bath. Um, I've I've made a lot of films for NHS organisations, but um, but it has to be real and it has to be true. You yeah. know, it's um, so. I mean, I I've I've only ever worked in news, sport, current affairs, where it's, where it's just all, it's all real. Um, documentary filmmaking, undercover stuff. Um, so it, um, I mean, that, and I don't think, I mean, the, the, that, that film that you've just seen the clip from now, I mean, that, that runs 22 minutes. But that guy, it was just, I just wanted you to see that. It, yeah. He was sitting opposite me and, and he was telling me about his, how he abused heroin and he used heroin and alcohol uh, and all sorts of other drugs. How he he came from a or he comes from a very loving family. His mum's a policewoman. His dad's a builder. You know, his brother uh, just maybe just like one of you guys. You know, and and um, and this 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 guy in the film was a he could have swam for England. He, he's a he was a very very gifted footballer, um, but he is the type of person who. He, as, as when he was younger, he started messing around with drugs. Yeah. And that was it. And he ended up in prison and he ended up, and then he, f he found his way out of prison. He volunteered to go to a house in Devon, which is called the Lighthouse Project, with other, other guys and they live together and they're starting to learn how to live again. Yeah. You know, and um, and I just wanted to show you that because you need to establish that rapport with someone. When someone starts to share that stuff, and it's really, really can be really difficult for them. But the only way you'll get that 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 truth, that honesty from them, is is for them to trust you. So you have to build a rapport with your interviewer. Yeah. So how actually did you get him to like open up to you? Like how did how did you build that level of trust with him? Um, well, I'm in recovery as well. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I've been in recovery for seven years, and, and, and it's something that I, I don't mind talking about. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people, kind of are quite embarrassed, or they feel ashamed, or they feel as if they're going to be judged because they they say that they're in in, in recovery. And um, but for me, it's just part of of, of kind of who I am, and, and I just don't drink anymore. You know, <laughs> and yeah. um, and I and I haven't I haven't had anything alcoholic for seven years, so. Um, but um, it, it's and, and and my recovery is very important to me. So so really, I mean, filmmaking in the southwest is it, I've I've produced a lot of work on um, 
on substance misuse, recovery from substance misuse. I've worked a lot with the NHS yeah. and other recovery agencies in, in this part of the country and, and, and up north. And um, so really what I did was, and, and the reason, see, I didn't have to share that with you. I didn't have to say, yeah. well, I'm in recovery, but it's not a big thing for me. It has completely changed my life, but I'm not, it's what I am and it's, it's part of who I am. And all of that stuff had to happen for me to be here now, but I won't go into that. But so I shared my stuff with him and then he shared his stuff with me. So he felt comfortable because he knew, he thought, actually, hold on, this, this guy's in recovery as well. So I'll be the same. And as soon as we established that rapport, it, it, he relaxed because he knew the questions I was asking him, <laughs> I kind of knew the answers, but I needed yeah. him to say them, <laughs> yeah. you see? And um, so as an interviewer, you use your own experience in life to identify, if you can, with who you're interviewing. So if you have a, had a similar experience as someone who you're about to interview, um, you use you, 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 you can identify with them. You say, I, you know what, I know what you mean. I, I, this happened to me and then that happened to me. So, or, or, or my brother this or my sister that or, or my mum and my dad. If there's something that you've got a life experience which relates to the person who you're about to interview, use it. Because that will put them at ease as well. Um, so, so yeah, so, I mean, I've, I've interviewed um, women in a women's prison not far from from Bristol. I was uh, one of the few to be allowed to go in with a camera and, and interview them. Um, and um, and that, that, was, that, was, that was powerful for me. That was because as soon as they found out that I was, they, they were in for all sorts of different crimes, but they, um, they all had issues. They all had problems with, with, with substance misuse. And I thought when I went into the prison, I said, to the, I said to the officials in the prison, I said to the staff, I said, they won't speak to me because I'm a man. There's no way they're going to speak to me because m most of them had been in some way or another ab abused by men as well, mm. you know. Um, but as soon as I said to the, the women who were in the prison, we all sat down in the room and I told them that I was in recovery and that's why they were there to find recovery. They started talking to me. Yeah. And, and, and there was a lot of incredible stuff caught on camera. So could you run us through like the average day of like filmmaking? Like what's the process like? <laughs> um, uh, well, for me, I, I, I'll probably work backwards. I, I, I don't tend to edit during the day. I, I just find it suits me more to, um, to edit at night time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, so I'll probably edit, be editing from six o'clock to one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm filming uh, kind of during the day, really. Uh, um, a lot of it depends on when people are available, when when they can make it to be yeah. interviewed, or you know, one of the important things about if you if I was to interview you, take you somewhere. One of the things I would say is if I if I if I was to interview about interview you on what your kind of aspirations are for the future and where. You, where you see this taking you. I think one of the first things I say to you is, well, where do you feel comfortable in Bath? What, what is a place where you go to that you can, that you can, that makes you feel comfortable, that you can relate to, yeah. you know? I mean, is, is there a place that is kind of your place? Um, I'm ask you the question. Is there a place where you feel comfortable? Anywhere, I don't, yeah? Yeah, anywhere. What about your hobbies? Just watch football, football. go out. Right, okay. Do you play football? Not yet. Right, okay. Okay, do you have a team? Yeah, I play for the school team at the moment, but I don't really. Yeah, yeah. It's not that. Do you have another team, like a bit, like a? No, not yet. Uh, yeah. I will join from the summer. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it would be football. I'd take you somewhere football orientated, yeah. and then we'd do the interview there, <coughs> and then kind of ask you about what you kind of like to do in your spare time, what's important to you, and then I would film you doing that, different shots of you doing that, yeah. to to dress the interview. Um, because it's not just about interviewing. You, you also have to be creative with getting different shots yeah. to drop in to, to, to the interview. So yeah, so um, when it's busy, to answer your question, it can be from six o'clock in the morning to one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that was really interesting. Not yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, another question is, uh, how much money can be made in the documentary filmmaking? Like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I made my first million 
by uh, 2000. Uh, I'm on my 10th million already. And, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it, no. This. No. The, the honest answer to that is. Yeah. Um, I think the. Uh, I think. When, when I when I when I went into broadcasting, it was still very much the days of you could still expect to get a staff job, and you thought that you would be with the broadcaster or the organisation for the rest of your life. But that doesn't happen now. It's become quite a kind of transient industry. It's very fluid. Um, so what you have to your advantage is you have the you have the internet and you have cameras and you have editing software and you have so much available to you so that you can produce your own work and launch it out there for people to see. Yeah. You see, um, that that's kind of the way of the business now. Um, you have everything that you need to be able to promote yourselves. Yeah. And for anyone who is really serious about about all of this, um, you would be insane not to be using what you have right now. Yeah. Um, because th this this is the way that the industry works now. So I, I would say that um, <coughs> you sometimes you'll get paid really good money sometimes i get paid good money for the for the for the for the clients who i make films for other times it's okay it's not too bad but um i, I think i do consider i think i'm i'm one of the i'm one of the fortunate ones because i, I do have a reasonably regular rollover of of yeah. of, of work but it, it all goes back to what i said right at the beginning you have to make contacts yeah you have to get to know people and then because that is the best form of advertising Word of mouth is the best form of advertising. So if I make, if I, I get to know you, you ask me to make a film for you, I make a film for you, a promotional film, whatever it may be, you're delighted with it, you're happy with it, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> a week later, okay, you bump into, you're having a drink together in the pub, oh, I saw your film, who made that? Oh, it was that guy, John. yeah, all right, I'm gonna give him a call and then bum, 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 and that, that is it. But you have to network and you have to get to know people. So, over, over, overall, do you like enjoy your your job? I love it. I don't. I, 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 I've never since nineteen since nineteen ninety four when I when I went into broadcasting. It is. I don't know how many times I've actually said the, the I've, I've actually said this, but I remember when I was when I, either I was in the newsroom or in the sports department, and every now and again, you know, I'd be sitting with my colleagues, and we'd all be kind of writing away, and and I'd kind of look up at one of them and say. It really does beat a real job, doesn't it? And there's, yeah, it does. It does because um, it doesn't feel like a real job. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like a real job, but it is hard work. It's long hours, um, and it. I don't think I could. You know, it's nine to five was never really for me. Um, it's um, it's only something that I've been doing recently, being up at, up at the uni, but. Um, the hours are long, it can be very stressful, and um, you don't really have much of a social life yeah. when you're working in broadcasting, not really, because the hours are very, very long. So you have to be really, really committed, you're really, really, really committed. And um, But if you are committed and you want it, then you'll get it, and it's extremely fulfilling, and it's very rewarding. And last question from us, um, could you talk through the shooting and editing process again, please? One of the, I think, one of the, what, what I do, and I, I would make this, this is a really, it really is a strong suggestion to anyone. When you're shooting, think of the edit. Okay. Yeah. You know, time and time again, and I've seen it in the past, and I, and I kind of see it sometimes with students now, they go out and they just shoot everything. Yeah. You, you don't need to go out and shoot everything. If you have an idea, do your interview with, with, with your interview first, get a feel, think about right, what have they said, what did he say, what did she say, what kind of shots do I need to get to illustrate bits of what she said or what he said, then go out and just wait, get some really nice shots, yeah. take them back into the edit suite, stitch them together, yeah. um, that's, that's, how, that's how I do it, I always do the interview first. Yeah. I always do the interview first. So, thank you for like, talking to us, but now I think we're going to have some questions from the audience. Uh, 
<laughs> what do you do in your spare time when you're not interviewing people? Um, I I go to um, I mean I, I used to, I used to, I used to work in football up in Scotland at part in broadcasting you know for is for ITV and um, but I I'm for I'm, I'm a Bristol Rovers supporter so I, I watch them a lot so and any City fans and <laughs> no yes yeah, in the gallery <laughs> oh right, in the gallery and um, and uh, <laughs> I'll see you soon and um, but yeah um, to be honest with you, I, in my spare time, I, I do research into something that, that I've been doing for a couple of years. It's to do with kind of uh, ancient medieval history. So I just like to shut myself away and I do research on that by myself. But to be honest with you, I don't really get a lot of spare time. It's because when you're freelance, you're always, if you're, if you're working, you're busy. If you're not working, you're trying to find work. So it's, 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 it can be really full on. But, it, but I, I, I enjoy it. Next question, please. Yeah. Um, obviously, you mentioned like with the broadcasting and stuff, like it's quite a competitive industry. What um, was there a part of you that thought like, can I do this? Like, am I lucky enough? Kind of thing. Um. Yeah, yeah. It, it's. I, when, I, when I went into broadcast, when I started at Scottish Television, and I can honestly say, I wasn't really a very confident kind of guy. I, I wasn't confident. Uh, I, I, I used to kind of joke around a lot and whenever I was kind of socialising with people and stuff. This is before I started in broadcasting. And, um, and, I, and, and I do remember, after a short period of time of being with people who were kind of very creative and very kind of forward thinking and they were they encouraged people to come forward with ideas about all sorts of different things um my, my it made me very 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 confident um and i did that then influence on you there yeah Rich? yeah cool. it made it it it, it I'm not going to kind of be melodramatic and say it completely changed me. It it didn't, but it made me very, very, very confident. Actually, in some some instances, it probably made me too confident. But I probably needed to be like that because you know, as the kind of years passed, I was given more and more responsibility, and which would it was it was quite a lot of responsibility to have, but it just seemed to come. I was I was confident, and I'd do it, and I just did it, um, and it's. When I think back on it now, um, the one thing I do miss is doing live, live directing, live, live, live. That's so stressful. Can be, it can be, not all the time, but um, but because the, I, I, I was in an environment which which encouraged you to be confident and to believe in yourself. Um, it was something that we all, I'm not saying we became addicted to it, but everyone talked about it. Everyone talked about that that buzz of being in the gallery, of being alive. So um, it did. It helped me. It helped me as a person. It helped me as a person. It wasn't. It was never just a job. Um, and then I met friends, and then we all became good friends. And the production team who I worked with in sport, there was probably about twelve of us. We we became like a family. We we did everything together, because we worked anti-social hours. We, we never had days off and everyone else had days off. Sometimes we didn't have days off. Um, and we became very, very close. For, so we were together for about six or seven years. And, and, and we were like kind of brothers and sisters. Um, and, um, and so, I mean, I'll, I'll always be kind of grateful for that because we're, st we're still close. So it, it's like a world within a world when you, you know, you, you're so busy working in it all the time that everything else kind of gets, gets shut out. But, but I loved it and I would, I would recommend it if anyone wants to do it, you know, do your best to get it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, sorry, what advice would you give to like, uh, like young people like wanting to follow the same career path as you did? I think the first thing you have to do really is right now, today, get on the phone, get on the internet and start looking around Bath and find out which independent production organisations, um, broadcasters, local newspapers, anything to get yourself in. Just, just phone them up or send them an email and say, look, 
I, I want to I get some experience in, in, in doing this or doing that and maybe in some script writing or working with cameras. I'll pick up bags, I'll make coffee, I will do whatever, whatever it is you need and, 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 I'm, and, I, and I'll do it voluntarily. Yeah, also, okay. and get in. That was a really inspirational interview, not gonna lie. Oh, thank you for having us today. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> so, yeah, thank you very much. And that's it. Is that it? Yeah.